all of you from today i want to begin a new segment so this segment is all about google arts and culture and today's topic is the abc's of hieroglyphs now what are hieroglyphs these are ancient symbols let's have a look well you might have seen this particular sculpture now let's know what is this all about the world and the culture of ancient egypt still has a part to enthrall and fascinate people all ages today so let's begin Mystery and intrigue are everywhere to be found in the rituals and customs of this advanced ancient society. But perhaps the most gripping mystery is the written language of pictures and symbols known as hieroglyphs. So we got to know finally what are hieroglyphs. Now let's see, what are this all about? It's as easy as ABC. Well, not quite, but scroll on to make a start in understanding the significance of a strange language. So let's find it out. What do we have? Okay, what is it? It looks like a pot to me. Well, A is for ancient. Hieroglyphic script is among the oldest known formal languages. It owes a lot to Sumerian writing and ancient Mesopotamia. And some argue that it developed from Egyptian artistic traditions, which breeded literacy in the area. These figures that you can see in front of you, painted and carved into Garzian or Nakada II pottery, which originates on the banks of the Nile around 4000 BC. Well, 4000 BC. They are decorative. But they also communicate a narrative and a meaning like language. This is why some scholars link them to the development of hieroglyphs. Well, we can see that. It's kind of different. The original alphabet was then derived from hieroglyphic script, and this becomes the basis for nearly all surviving formal systems of letters, including the Latin alphabet. Well, 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 let's see what do we have. It's getting interesting soon. Now, what is this? This is a papyrus from the Book of the Dead of Nijmet from the British Museum. Now, A is done. Let's look at B. B is for belief. Hieroglyphs, like much early written language, were used primarily in religious contexts, recording the rituals and belief systems that were so important to Egyptian society. Well, hmm, we can see that. In fact, the word hieroglyph itself is Greek for sacred carvings. Ooh. Let's look at here. One of the best surviving examples of ancient Egyptian text is the Book of the Dead, or to use its less morbid title, the Book of Emerging into the Light. Illuminated hieroglyphic text is used in the book to help priests ease the passage of the dead into the afterlife. So we know that the Egyptians believed in afterlife. Yes. Now let's look at here. What do we have? C. A, B, C, C. C is for the cursive. Okay, so they had cursive. It's an easy to imagine that hieroglyphs were simply pictures communicating stories, but the images were in fact assigned to syllables of speech or individual letters. This meant that it could be written in cursive also, just like modern day writing at school. Who knows? The Book of the Dead is a particularly rich resource for joined up Egyptian writing. This technique is important for the development of written languages as it allows for quicker flowing writing rather than painstaking time consuming drawings. Well that we can see in here. Now what is this? This is D. D is for decoding. After the decline of ancient Egypt, many societies adopted Latin scripts thanks to the expansive Roman Empire. Hieroglyphs fell out of use and, when they were later discovered by archaeologists and Egyptologists, remained indecipherable for many years where decoding, coding, all are necessary. Until the discovery of the Rosetta Stone, that is, this one. Well, found in 1799, the block of granite rock is carved with the text of a decree marking, a gift from Ptolemy V to the temples, and records the Nile floods during the king's reign. The text is repeated three times in hieroglyphic ancient Egyptian language. Well, demotic ancient Egyptian. And finally, in ancient Greek. Modern knowledge of the Greek language meant that the hieroglyphs could be decoded for the first time. The work was done by French scholar Jean Franchot uh, Champollain in the 1820s. Well, we can see that in here. Now we have got to know. So let's tap to explore. Let's see what do we have in E. E is for Egyptian civilization. The emittance is there. Let's see what is this all about. Okay, so we are in front of the Egyptian pyramid. 
let's look at his wow it's so beautiful let me know in the comment section what do you feel and how do you feel about it i want to go there let's see let's move a little bit okay it's so weird to be in front of this particular egyptian pyramid well i just want to go close let me see what do we have wow so that's all students for today i hope that you have loved this video bye bye